Hi, this is JJ at CCBC. In this video, we'll look at how to ease objects in your Flash animations. Major topics we'll cover are easing in and easing out. The software I'm using for this video is Adobe Flash Creative Suite version 6 on a Mac. Quick review of Flash animation basics, create your vector shape, convert to a symbol, apply motion tween, apply your change. So let's do that. Here's a flash file I've opened. I'm going to zoom in to this one so we have a little more space to work with. The goal of this is to make a bouncing ball and to make a very realistic looking bouncing ball animation. So let's make our ball so we can animate it. I'll take my oval tool, make a ball, convert it to a symbol. I'll just call this ball. It's already a movie clip. Hit OK create my motion tween and stretch it out a little bit there we go so now we just need to make our changes in position <clears throat> now this is a, a three-point position animation our ball is going to start up at the top of the screen it's going to go down to the bottom and bounce and at the end of the animation we want it to move all the way back up to the top of the screen basically in the same position so for our final frame we're just going to store the last keyframe where it is automatically. So I'll insert a keyframe, all, and that stores the position of the ball at the beginning and the end of our animation. So it'll start and stop in the same place. In the middle, I want to move the ball straight down. Now I can do that by hand, but you always run the risk of accidentally being a little bit off center and your animation starts getting animated along a, a weird angle. Um, so rather than doing it by hand, let me undo that, Command Z. I'm just going to move it using the arrow keys. Now I can press and hold the arrow key. You notice it moves one pixel at a time going straight down. If I hold Shift and press down, it goes 10 pixels at a time. So it's much faster to just hold Shift, get it down in approximately the right position, and then you can fine tune it by letting go of the Shift key and just pressing individual arrow keys until Boom, we're in exactly the position we want to be. So let's take a look at this animation. So our ball goes down, bounces back up, and then falls again. Now the only problem with this animation is that it's moving at a continuous speed. If we want this to look a little bit more natural, we need to use an effect called easing. And what easing does is it eases in and eases out of the animation. So it starts slow and ends fast, or it starts fast and ends slow. And it creates a much more natural look to the motion. Think of a, a vehicle. If we were to animate a vehicle and it just started going 60 miles an hour instantly, it, that's pretty unrealistic and it wouldn't look very natural on the screen. That's why this ball, it looks more like a yo-yo. And even then, it doesn't look very much like a yo-yo. So let's try applying some, applying some easing and see what happens. So easing is a property of your motion tween. So in order to get the motion tween properties, just click on the timeline to select that tween. And over here in your properties panel, you get your motion tween properties. And the very first property is easing. So if I click here, I can increase it to 100 or I can decrease it to negative 100. Now I can never remember easing in and easing out, which is in which direction, but I just set it to one and uh, run it and test it. And if it's not the one I want, I just reverse it. So command return, you'll notice it's starting very slow and it ends very fast. And then it goes real slow and it ends real fast. Now the falling looks really good. It's like gravity is accelerating the ball towards the earth but the bounce at the bottom looks weird. It shouldn't get faster going up to the top. It sh should actually get slower. So that's one of the weaknesses of easing. You'll notice because this is one continuous motion tween, my easing is applied all the way across. I can't have it ease in from here and then ease out from here. Um, I have to do two separate motion tweens to achieve that result. So let's undo that motion tween or the easing effect, set it back to zero. And uh, I'm actually going to make a new flash file to show you the difference between the two animations. So give me a second to reset this up. We'll do new. OK. We'll zoom in. Make our ball. Convert it to a symbol. 
This time I'm going to call it Ball 1, and it'll make sense in a minute why I'm doing that. It's already a movie clip. I'll hit OK. I'll right-click, apply my motion tween. I'm only going to go to frame 50. I'm going to bring my ball straight down, so I'm going to select it, use my arrow key. I'm holding shift so it moves 10 pixels at a time, get it to the bottom, and then one pixel. That looks pretty good. So now in order to move the ball back up, I need to do a separate motion tween, but for now I can put my easing effect on here, so we'll ease into it. We'll run this animation so you can see what it looks like. So that's pretty good for falling. We need it to bounce and go back up, um, but for a falling effect it starts slow, ends fast. That's solid. Okay, so in order to do a different easing effect on the second half, we need to do a second motion tween. So I'm going to make a new layer because you can't put two motion tweens in the same layer. You notice it fills it with empty frames. That's fine. I'm going to go into my library and I'm going to duplicate this ball. So I'm going to right click duplicate and it asks for a name. I'm going to call it ball 2. So now you see why I named it ball 1. So I've got ball 1 and ball 2 and in order to see the difference I'm going to edit ball 2. So I'm going to double click on this symbol and I'm going to change the fill <coughs> excuse me, the fill color. So now we have a blue ball, and I'll go back to scene one. You notice here in my library, ball one is red, ball two is blue. So now I can use two different balls for this effect. So I'm going to go to frame 51 and insert a new keyframe on this second layer. You'll notice ball one disappears because it only existed on the first 50 frames, right? So I'm going to take ball two and I'm going to move it over here. And for now, I'm not going to worry too much about the position. It's not in exactly the same position as the first ball, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to position it. I'm going to right click and create a motion tween. Now you'll notice it didn't give us that 24 frames we're used to getting. And the reason for that is we're not on frame one anymore. We're way out frame 51. So what we can do is just put our cursor next to it and stretch it out. Go to frame 100 and I'm going to move this up to the top. Roughly I'm just going to ballpark it where that first animation started. And here I'm going to do a different type of easing, so I'm going to ease out on this animation. So let's run this and see how it looks. So the red ball is going to fall good, and the blue one's going to bounce up, and then it switches over to the red one. So what I need to do now is basically get them in the same position so it looks like a smoother transition from the first ball to the second ball. So here's how I can do that. I'm going to take the starting position of the red ball. I'm going to click on the red ball to select it. And over here, I can just write down the X and the Y properties. So my X is 249 and my Y is 34.5. So over here in my blue ball animation, I'm just going to select the last keyframe, select the blue ball, and I'm going to type in those values. So X needs to be 249 and my Y value needs to be 34.5. And that positions it in exactly the same position as the red ball. Okay, so when I go from the last frame to the first frame, you'll notice the balls don't move at all. So now all I need to do is fix from 50 to 51. So in frame 50, my red ball is at position 249X and 375Y. So I'm going to Go to my blue ball, select it, and make those changes. So 249x, 375y, and now when I transition from 50 to 51, that ball's not moving at all. So if I run this movie again, you'll notice it's a much smoother looking animation. It looks very natural, the bounce is nice and hard, it goes up floats to the top, changes direction, and then increases with gravity on its way back down. You can only know that this is two separate animations because I've used two symbols and I've colored them differently. So the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back into my library. I'm going to take ball number two. I'm going to change it back to red. So I'm going to change the fill color so it matches ball number one. So over here in the library, you can see the thumbnail. There's ball two, ball one. So they're the exact same ball, but you don't know the difference. Um, our audience won't know the difference, and when I run this animation, we have a very smooth looking ball bounce. So I've done a couple things in this video. I've used ease in and ease out. I've used multiple animations, but swapped 
the object between two animations. It's basically the same object. I've just animated it two different times and it starts and ends in exactly the same position. So it's a seamless transition between those two motion tweens. Um, so this is a much more natural looking ball bouncing compared to this first video where our ball is moving at a continuous speed. This doesn't look very natural at all. It feels very unnatural. So that's how you can add easing to your animations and this is how dramatic the impact can be in terms of the realism of the effects you're going for, especially where gravity is involved or acceleration or deceleration of an object is involved. Hope you learned something. See you in the next video.